Hi there, Robin here from Expert Island, and today we're going to be talking about marine audio. This is the start of a series that we're going to have covering everything from head units, single dim, double dim, the round ones. We're also going to talk about brands like Pile, Kenwood, Sony. We're going to have Infinity and JBL as well on the board. We're also going to be talking about amplifiers. We're going to be talking about two channel, four channel, four channel crossover, and the stories go on from there. Now, we're also going to talk about subwoofers. 10 inch and 12 inch subs. We're going to talk about how to hook those up with your amplifiers. We're going to talk about how to get the head units hooked up to amplifiers. And of course, we're going to talk about marine speakers. Marine speakers are going to come in a variety of sizes. We're going to talk about from four inch, five and a quarter, six and a half, seven and point seven, eight inch. We're going to cover all of that in the series of videos. Now for today's video, we're going to talk about, well, we're going to start with head units. We're going to talk about pile first, and then we'll move on to some of the other brands. We'll talk about the advantages of having an actual head unit at a reasonable price, being able to package it with other equipment so you can get something bigger out of your entire boat. So in today's video, we're covering head units, and we're being specific. We're going to talk just about the pile because we have a variety of them to talk about. So we're going to talk about the PLMR B29W, which also comes in a 29B, which is the black version. That's the style here. And we're also going to talk about the PLRMR 23BTW, which also comes in a black. Now, that one's slightly different. It's considered a 27BTB. We're going to put all these links down below for you. Now, the big thing about these radios here are their overall features. Uh, they do feature themselves as 4 times 75 watts. That's not as important as what your intentions are. Now, if I'm buying this radio because I just want to run a couple of six and a halves and a couple of five and a quarters straight off the actual unit. This is going to power these speakers really well. You could be a little selective if you get an opportunity to buy these ones, which are PLMR 62s, which are the six and a half or the 52s, the five and a quarters. Those are two way speakers and they're very high efficiency speakers. And what that means is uh, it takes very little power to get them to sound really good. And you do get a lot of volume out of them. Now, remember, high efficiency speaker has a downside. I don't want to stick that on an amplifier. Uh, because it takes so little to get them going, they get to their top end pretty fast. So they're really good for this kind of stuff, head units, not so good for amplifiers. But in turn, you're going to get great sound out of the four channels that are powered already inside these units straight through speakers like that. Now again, don't use head units to run things like weightboard speakers or anything else like that or you know uh, any really top end driver package because they want more power. They want more power to get themselves going. Doesn't matter what the wattage is. It just needs more power. So we're going to talk about the big features of these two guys here and why they are probably one of the most popular units out there. There are other brands. Don't get me wrong. We've got Sony. We've got Kenwood. We've got all these other brands to talk about. We're going here first because for the price, the bang for the buck and the overall feature package is really, really good and makes them really, really popular. So we'll take this stuff off to the table. All right, so here we are. We've got uh, four of the marine audio units. Now, this one review is going to cover all of them because there's really only one feature, and I'm going to explain that that's different between these two styles. Uh, they roughly came out at the same time. They do have different cosmetic views to them. Uh, again, we'll put the model numbers down below, but you are looking at the PLMRB29W and the 29B. That's on this side here. Now, how do you know you're looking at that one? That one is the one that has all the buttons laid across the bottom of the unit, right across the bottom with just some big buttons around the main knob. Uh, main knob turns and enters. Uh, they keep them simple enough so this way not too confusing and easy to operate on a boat. So we'll put this one down here. Now, over on this side here, we have got the PLRMR. 23BTW. Remember, we'll note this down at the bottom for you and we'll have the links going back to our package on Amazon for this. Uh, now, this one here, you'll note, also comes in black, but that one is called the 27BTB. There you go. Bluetooth in black. Bluetooth in white. So that's where they get their model numbers. Now, you'll notice, you know you're looking at these ones because the screen is larger and there are no buttons located at the bottom here. Uh, they've clustered them all around the volume knob, which also enters. Uh, so if you like a bigger display and you don't plan on using the buttons, this is a pretty good layout. I'll be honest, I'm not a button pusher once I set it up. I tend to leave these units alone. Um, 
you've got bass and treble controls, you've got balance, you've got fader, you've got uh, loudness options, you've got built-in EQ options. So this way you can just choose from the presets. So all that's in there, preset radio. Now this is just regular uh, FM. When we spend more money on the Kenwoods or Sony's, uh, or some of those other brands, you'll get a digital FM high def tuner inside of those. That's similar to what you have in your car versus what are coming in here. But you're buying this probably because it has Bluetooth on it. Now it does have a USB and an SD slot on it, but primarily Bluetooth, which means you still can run your Spotify or any music you have on your phone, that sort of thing, off right into the actual unit wirelessly. Uh, if you need to use the auxiliary cable, they do give you an auxiliary input in the front. Now, on the back of are identical and that's because internally uh, they're the same radio it's the front side that's different so internally same radio just the cosmetics of the front side so if we stack these two you'll now notice what's going on as i mentioned buttons across no buttons across minimal buttons large buttons around the knob all the buttons are around that knob there so that's the difference between there so there we go now, quickly cover the back. Easy to install, also very popular because it's shallow. There's no CD player in here. There is a CD player version of that, and we'll cover that on a different video for uh, models with CD players on them. Uh, but it's just, that's a larger unit. And so that's the main difference between the two. This is the basket. Two things that happened somewhere around the late 70s, early 80s. This was the biggest invention right here. We got rid of the two knobs setup that we've seen the old radios and this is what came out. This is a basket which allows you to put this right into your vehicle, in this case your boat, and you'll be able to use these tabs here to basically tighten it, lock it in place. You move these out, that bumps it against the sidewall, flips up underneath the dash and locks this basket in place for you so nothing's gonna happen to it. So that's what's going on here. Very important. Uh, if you think you're gonna recycle the old one that you have in the boat, uh, you want to compare, take the basket off of your new radio uh, and slide it on the old radio. What you're checking for is to make sure that it lines up. Uh, it's going to be the same size. The size will be the same. But what you're looking for is this one little piece right at the end, this little flipper here. That's what locks the actual unit in place. Uh, you want to make sure that the old unit and the new unit lock at the same point. Now, how do you do that? Let's say this is the basket that's in the boat. That's already pre-installed in the boat. That's my old radio. I took the radio out. I wanna know if this radio is going to fit in there. Well, I'll take the basket from the new radio, take my old radio in hand, and I will try and slide that basket on top of the old radio. Now, if that basket goes in place and locks on properly, well, now you're okay. You can now take your new radio and slide it into your old basket. If for any reason this basket does not securely lock in place, well, then you can't recycle the old basket. Manufacturers will vary the points in which these things catch. There's no set rules to that. So if it does, you're lucky. If it doesn't, well, it'll only take you about two extra minutes to change out the whole basket. So there we go. That's what's going on right there. Now, nice part about this, and most manufacturers do like to do this, and I do appreciate when they do this, is they put a sticker on the top of their product. And that means I don't have to hold the instruction manual in my hand. It shows me the wiring diagram. Now, the nice thing, again, almost 50 years now, the wiring diagram has stayed the same. Uh, we've added to the wiring diagram, we've added wires to the harness but the basic functionality and colors on the wires have remained the same. So if you're taking something out and somebody did a good job on the old one and you're removing the old one, you can color for color replace another brand for this brand or vice versa because the colors have remained the same. Now on this model here, there's no tail hanging out of the back. It is a separate entity altogether. All you do is take this and plug it into there just like that. That's going to allow you to get that harness in there. The fuse has been pre-installed underneath. There are RCA plugs, so if you'd like to hook it up to an amplifier, you're going to do that here. In this particular case, they are both outs. You've got left and right front, left and right rear, all positioned here, and here's where your antenna is going to get plugged into. Standard antenna is not the micro, it's a standard size antenna port. That's what's going on there. Now, when we look at the color code and we go, well, what's going on? Here's the harness. There's lots of wires. 
This is going to be complicated. No, it's not. Because the first four sets of wires, pairs, all the way up to the green. So we're going to get that break right there. So we've got purple, gray, white, and green all in place. So to follow the actual colors on the cables, there's lots of cables, but they're not complicated. The whole harness is broken into two sections. We've got speaker wires on one side, and we've got power on the other side. That's what's going on right there. All I did was, well, find the four speaker wires, pull them over. They don't uh, confuse the two and mix them up. They, they kind of have a straight up split there. Uh, what you do end up with is four sets of colors here. The purple being your rear right speaker. And then you've got on the extreme end, you've got the green, which is the left rear speaker. Then we move up to the gray being your front right speaker. And then you have your white, which is your left front speaker. So that covers all of that. Like I said, all I did, I don't have that memorized yet. I just read that off of there. I've been doing this for 30 years, and these are one of these things that's just not worth memorizing. Then you've got a red, a blue, a black, and a yellow cable. Uh, they're pretty much standard. You're going to notice that right off the hop, we've got a red and a yellow. And on here, one's referred to as power, and the other one is referred to accessory power. So one wire is usually bigger than the other, but if it's not, so in this case, the yellow is the bigger one, and I do know that the yellow is the main power. So that's the power that's going to run, not just the display and the clock, but it's going to keep everything running, so it needs more power, constant power. That's what the yellow is looking for. So power that doesn't get turned off when you take the key out. Red is accessory power, so that's going to go to a power source that only goes on when you have the key or the motor engaged. So if you've got the boat running, there you go, that's good. If you have the accessories on, that's good. If you want to make sure that the clock doesn't reset itself and you get enough power to the radio, that's why the yellow one's got to go to a more substantial power source. Then we have the black cable, which is usually the same size as the yellow cable, and that's our ground. We want to ground that to the negative side of the battery uh, or to any of our other main accessories that are grounded all the time. The blue, they still give it the old school tag as remote antenna connection. More importantly is the word remote. This will, when I turn on the radio, will send a signal to turn on an amplifier. So this way the amp isn't on all the time, but does go on automatically when I turn on the radio. So when this guy gets power, this guy is going to get power after I physically turn the on button on the, the radio. So even though the radio, the engine's running, until I physically turn on the radio, this blue wire won't send power out of it to turn on the amplifier. And that's it. That's a pretty much a breakdown of every harness that's out there. Uh, it covers everything that you need to know. There's lots of other options that you could get or not get and that sort of stuff. But a basic harness setup -da -da, is right there. That's everything in a nutshell. So I guess, are these worth it? If you're looking for Bluetooth, if you're looking for MP3, USB, some straightforward setup, like I said earlier, a good speaker to combine with this are PLMR 62s and 52s. Uh, because they're high efficiency speakers, easy uh, to install, uh, very straightforward to operate, and sound really good on a head unit like this. Now, you can also buy an amplifier and add more, like subwoofers or larger speakers or wakeboard speakers or anything like that. But to get you going, if you don't need all the extra bells and whistles, this is definitely, definitely a bargain of a product, plus it still comes with one year warranty. It doesn't matter where you buy it as long as it's either in Canada or in the US or wherever you get an authorized dealer. There you go. So next from here, we're going to talk about a couple of amplifiers. So look for the next video and uh, then we're gonna keep going. We're gonna go all week long with this.